Hey guys, Heather here with BTS Nutrition and I wanted to kind of hop on for a second and talk about what happens when you're doing your nutrition coaching and you are going to go out to dinner, you're going to go have a night with the girls, go hang out with some guys, um, whatever it is on your social calendar that you have coming up, weddings, birthday parties. We get a lot of clients who kind of freak out when this happens and they're just not sure what to do because they don't know what food's going to be at the event. They may not already know what they're going to order. And then they, they get there and they have no idea what the food is. How is it made? How is it prepared? What's the recipe? I don't know. I can't have be on my phone the whole time. That's rude. And they just freak out and it's over. They're just not going to log anymore and they give up. And we do not want that to be you. So take a deep breath and let's go over. I'm going to kind of walk you through what I do in those situations. And of course, if you know you have an event like this coming up and you're kind of worried about how to handle it, that is also what your coach is for. And please reach out to them and use them as a resource. They would be glad to talk you through, um, like I'm about to do, how that you can go and enjoy these events, which are part of life, and still not derail your nutrition. And that's the first thing I'm going to say is while nutrition is important and your goals with nutrition are important, life is also important and living life is important. So let's say that once a week, once every two weeks, you have a girl's night or a guy's night or you go on a date night. Um, that's okay. It is okay to have a great day where you log your breakfast, your lunch, your snacks, and then you stop logging and you go enjoy your girl's night or you go enjoy your guy's night or you go enjoy your date. Um, and you just don't log and you enjoy and you in the back of your mind as you've learned things through BTS, you know how to make better choices, but you also know that one meal is not going to derail your entire progress. So if you're out to dinner and you want to have some chips and queso, that's fine. In fact, Coach Jan and I do that every time we get together, which is not that often since we live in different states right now. But when we do, we don't log. We get together. We enjoy our time together and then we start fresh the next day. So I just want to encourage you. That if this is um, an every a once a week type of thing, that's okay. I always like to give myself um, one cheat meal a week. Now that's not one cheat day a week. I still log my food up until my cheat meal, but I like to. It's good for mental health to also just kind of unplug and enjoy, be in the moment and enjoy that time. All right. So if you're thinking, well, I don't want to do that. What else can I do? I will tell you. So. If I know, let's say every Friday at my house is pizza night. Um, we love pizza. And so I have two boys, they're three and four. And so what I like to do is the be very first thing I do on Friday morning is I open up my fitness pal and I log the pizza I'm gonna have. And I know what we're gonna have. Um, sometimes we use oven pizzas from Costco, sometimes we order, but since I'm the one ordering and cooking, I know what pizza we're gonna have, so I log it. I log my slices of pizza. And then I plan the rest of my day around that pizza. So since pizza is really high carb and really high fat, I try to pick meals for breakfast and lunch and snacks that are lower in carbs and lower in fat so that I don't blow my macros out of the water with pizza. So I backward plan. I put in the meal that is gonna be my, not necessarily cheat meal, but my, you know, the, the meal that I'm worried about. And then I backwards plan the rest of my day to make that meal fit. I also do that with wine. If I want to have a glass of wine at night, or if I know I'm going to be going to an event where I probably will have a glass of wine, I log that first thing in the morning and I plan the rest of my day around it so that I have enough macros to enjoy the glass of wine or enjoy the pizza without derailing my progress. And uh, that's a, that's a great way to strategize and to do it. This also works with eating out. If you know ahead of time that you're gonna go eat out, then you can go online and look at the menu. Pretty much every menu in the world is online. And even if they don't have their nutrition info, you can pick out some meals that you might want. And here's what I tell people to do. Let's say you're going to a cute little mom and pop Italian restaurant. And that, while you looked at the menu ahead of time online and you decided you know, out of all the food that they have, you probably wanted the lasagna, you go to my fitness pal and you look it up and of course this mom and pop restaurant is not in my fitness pal so you immediately panic and you think well the food i'm gonna log isn't gonna be accurate what do i do what do i do i can't backward plan like you just said if i can't find the the nutritional info for my meal and my thought to you is so we're using the italian example i would say go to the olive garden Type it, not literally go there, in my fitness pal, go to the Olive Garden and put in their lasagna classico. I guarantee that it will be close enough 
that it will give you an accurate representation of what you're about to eat at the little mom and pop Italian restaurant. In fact, it's probably going to be the Olive Garden one is probably even more fattening than what you're eating at the more farm to table type mom and pop restaurant. But if you go ahead and log it, then you at least have an idea of how many calories, fats, proteins, and carbs are going to be in that lasagna. And then you can backward plan your day around it, like we just said. So that's a tip I like to use for restaurants. If I'm not going to a chain, then I pick something off the menu and I find the equivalent or close to what I pick off the menu in a chain restaurant, which is in my fitness pal, and I log it. I do the same for Mexican restaurants. 90% of Mexican restaurants are not in my fitness pal, but there are some chains in there. Um, I love chicken and cheese quesadillas. So what I do is if I go out to eat and my Mexican restaurant isn't in my fitness pal, I log a Moe's chicken and cheese quesadilla, 580 calories. Yep, I have that memorized because I love quesadillas. And I will log that. And then I will, I usually type in Mexican restaurant chips. And there's an entry in my fitness pal that has that and it's by the chip. I usually put in like 18 or 20 chips. Um, and if I'm not counting my chips, because let's be honest, who sits there and counts their chips as they eat them, then I try to just overestimate, you know, 50 chips, which would be an extreme amount of chips. But you get what I'm saying. I overestimate in these cases versus underestimate. Um, same with cheese dip. If, uh, if, you know, my restaurant is in there, I use Jose Peppers because that's a big chain restaurant and I put in, or Chewy's, that's another one. And I put in their queso dip and I put in the tablespoons that I'm having. That does not mean I go to a Mexican restaurant with a tablespoon and measure my queso dip. <laughs> but it does mean that I am putting in a rough estimate to at least get some type of caloric information for the dinner I'm about to have. Now, if you're one of those people who are like me and you're very OCD and you don't like guessing, I would say in this case, it's better to get an estimate and guess and still go out and do the things you enjoy, like going out to eat with friends or family, than to never go out anywhere and never eat out because you don't want to be exact in, or you're, you can't be exact in your measurements. And so I would encourage you to, if this is an every once in a while thing, just embrace that it may not be exactly right, but it's going to be close enough for your nutritional progress and goals. It's not going to derail you. Now, if you're eating out every day for every meal, we need to have a separate talk separate video on that, separate powwow with your coach. But this is for the occasional eating out and um, tips on how to do that. So that's how I handle restaurants that are not in my fitness pal, that are not some of the bigger chain restaurants. And then another tip I like to give people is um, a lot of times I get the question of, well, I'm going to go to a party and I have no idea what food's going to be there. And then when I get there, I, you know, it's, it's all cut up into little finger foods and I have no idea. So in that instance, and those of you who are really OC, you're really going to hate what I say about this. You need to save as much calories as you can for that event. So let's say um, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to go to my niece's fifth birthday, which is probably a bad example because my sister-in-law is super, super healthy. And so all her snacks are probably like delicious and nutritious. But let's just say I'm going to the typical five-year-old birthday where I don't know that the snacks are going to be nutritious and delicious. There's going to be cake and ice cream and I, I just don't know all that. And let's say I'm, the party's at 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. So what I'm going to do is, to be honest, I'm going to eat less during the day. I'm going to I'm gonna hoard my food for that party. So um, this also works if you're going to go out to a restaurant that you've never been to and you have no idea what's on the menu, or you're going to go to a wedding reception and you have no idea what they're going to serve at the dinner, or you have no idea what the hors d'oeuvres are going to be. I would say to you, then during that day, if the wedding's on a Saturday, I would eat a light breakfast, I would eat a light lunch, high protein, because usually the adorbs that you're gonna see at places like parties and weddings are gonna be high carb and high fat and usually lower protein. So I would eat a higher protein breakfast and lunch for that reason, as well as protein will help keep you full. And then I would just drink a lot of water and try to make it until that special event. And then you go into the event having 1,000 to 1,200 calories left you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Even if you don't log exactly because you don't know exactly what you're eating, you're going to be fine. And even if you go over the 1,000 to 1,200 calories at that event, I doubt you'll go over by much, if at all. And so that's another trick. If you're just really lost as to, you know, what's going on and 
you can't look at the menu ahead of time because it's a special event or a wedding or something like that, then I would say back um, log your calories. Eat less during the day, higher protein, drink a lot of water, and then go enjoy yourself with that special event. Because again, um, eating out and going to these special events, they're not meant to derail you and throw you off. It's a different story if you're doing this all the time. But if this is like, I mean, how often do you go to weddings? I mean, some of you may go all the time, but I go to a wedding like maybe once a year, maybe twice if that, especially in my old age, nobody's getting married anymore. So I would just encourage you when you have those life moments, take a deep breath, don't let it freak you out and just enjoy it. Be in the moment, be present and know that the one meal or the one event is not going to derail all the hard work you're doing. And like I said, reach out to your coach, reach out to us at BTS Nutrition if you're curious and you want some more insight and help on this. But I hope that these few tips and tricks like backlogging or backlogging your food, putting in the food you want first in the morning and then planning your day around it. I hope that helped. I hoped um, learning how to go to restaurants that aren't mom, uh, main chain restaurants, a mom and pop restaurant. I hope that helps that you pick something off their menu and then you find the equivalent in a chain restaurant that might be in MyFitnessPal. And I hope that it helps to know that if you're going somewhere and you just have no idea what's going to be there, to eat higher protein, drink lots of water, lighter calories at the beginning of the day so that you have a bunch left. I do this a lot when we go to military balls, which again is like once a year, if that. Um, I just try to save as many calories as I can for the military ball or I go on a long run or do a long workout or something that day. And then I have fun and I start again tomorrow. So, all right, guys, I hope that helped. And this is getting kind of long. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But please message us or leave any uh, comments below and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Hope you guys have a great one. See you next